Welcome to a presentation from the Nevada Department of Education. Thank you for joining us. With the onset of the coronavirus, teaching and learning in the traditional classroom has come to a halt. Today, schools across the nation and throughout the world have transitioned to remote learning. The Nevada Digital Learning Collaborative is glad to bring you the COVID-19 series of webinars, which will share valuable insights and tips for teaching and learning from afar. We are excited that you've decided to join us today. The Nevada Department of Education is committed to making the transition to remote learning as seamless as possible as there are minimal breaks in your student's learning path. The Department of Education places Nevada students at the center of every decision they make. They are truly committed to seeing that all students succeed. The COVID-19 pandemic has upended family life around the world. School closures, working remote, physical distancing, it's a lot to navigate for anyone, but especially for parents. Today's topic is the top 10 remote learning tips for parents, featuring Kim Loomis. Welcome, I'm Kim Loomis. I've worked in the field of digital learning since 1999. I spent 10 years in the classroom as a high school mathematics teacher. Later, I held positions in school leadership and central office administration. I retired last summer as the Director of Online and Blended Learning in Nevada's Clark County School District, where I provided leadership in the growth of digital learning in the K-12 setting. I have over 20 years in the online and blended school setting, from teaching, designing digital content, professional development, and virtual school administration, to managing systems and processes for growing classrooms of the future. Today, on behalf of the Nevada Department of Education, I will be presenting the top 10 remote learning tips for parents. Our agenda for this webinar will begin with a brief look at remote learning. Then we'll move into the top 10 parent tips. Our goal is to share insights on how to keep your children engaged in learning when their teachers are at a distance. Supporting learning and keeping a sense of normalcy and routine for kids is important, especially during these times of school closures. As schools and teachers are working to create distant learning plans, parents are juggling many uncertainties, including work situations, while trying to keep their kids engaged with learning at home. While this new reality won't be easy, the good news is there's a lot of resources to help parents navigate the road ahead. So let's begin. As the former online and blended learning director, you know I'm a huge fan of digital learning but I never expected a world quite like the one we've been pushed into today. With COVID-19 causing widespread school closures, children across the country have been given alternative resources, some online, to study outside of the classroom. Temporary solutions for remote learning range from online classroom tools like Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, and other online platforms to live video conferencing by teachers. While parents are adjusting to this new scenario, during this time, it's also important to help kids stay focused on learning and avoid overuse of games, social media, and videos. This is a stressful, unpredictable time for everyone, including families, parents, and children. In these times, we must remember that all stakeholders, teachers, administrators, students, and parents are all learning new skills in pedagogy. Please be patient with yourself and those around you. Also, it's important that we remember to focus on the core business of schools, relationships, and learning. Even with the addition of te technology as a tool for learning, we should never take the heart of the classroom teacher out of the learning process. Without a doubt, this is a challenging time for parents, teachers, and children alike. Studies show that screen time can have both positive and adverse impacts on kids. And the shift to online education will only increase your child's time with their devices. With school closures, our focus should not be on online or distance learning. It should be about maintaining continuous learning. Technology will be a crucial tool for learning when physical classroom and schools are closed. Yet teaching and learning is not about the technology. Try to focus in on the core business of schools, relationships, and learning. Fear, uncertainty, 
and being asked to stay at home to slow the spread of COVID-19 can make it tough for families to keep a sense of calm. But it's important to help children feel safe, keep healthy routines, manage their behavior, and build resilience. Let's dive into our 10 tips. Number one, be active in learning. Take an active interest and participate in the learning alongside your child when possible. Also encourage a growth mindset. In this new learning venue, you can help by monitoring your child's level of interest and engagement. The simplest way to do this is via observation. Look at your child's eyes to see if they're following along with the screen. Check if they're taking notes or zoning out. Ask questions at the end of the lesson. It's important to confirm that your children are indeed learning. If you find that your child is not engaging in the lessons, don't be afraid to contact the school or classroom teacher to better explore the issue. Help your child own their learning. No one expects parents to be full-time teachers or to be educational or content matter experts. Provide support and encouragement and expect your child to do their part. Struggling is allowed and encouraged, but don't help too much. Being independent takes lots of practice. Remember to wait. Children take more time to process questions than adults might realize. You will have to pause and give them time to consider an answer and resist the urge to jump in, giving them clues to get the answer right. Be patient with your child. This encourages thinking and builds confidence. Deliberately waiting for your child to respond will also prevent you from doing the work for them. Stifle your own perfectionism. They are kids and they are learning. They need to learn to find their own mistakes. Keep it low key. It's okay if your child doesn't finish something. Don't forget how powerful praise can be. It's the best way to motivate and teach. Your child should not be staring at a computer screen for seven and a half hours every day. Work together to find ways to prevent downtime from being just more screen time. Help your children maintain contact with friends through social media and other online technologies, but monitor your child's social media use. Remind your child to be polite, respectful, and appropriate in their communications. Number two, keep safe online. Monitor your child's activity online and ensure they use the school district approved digital tools for all work and communication. Work together as a family, helping each other learn. This might take some creative juggling of schedules, but the at-home learning should be a shared responsibility. Children crave their siblings and parents' attention. During the best of times, though not a peaceful period, this odd disruption in ordinary life might provide a rare window for families to spend quality time together, learning side by side, safely online. Number three, establish a schedule. Kids do best when the world is predictable. Don't underestimate the power of a schedule. If you and your children are all doing the work from home, it's likely that it's the first time this has ever happened. A schedule for your work and your child's work is extremely important. Experts recommend keeping them on the same or similar sleeping schedule that they had when they were going to school. If a schedule was not provided by your teachers, help them write one for not only each day, but each week as well. Create a daily schedule with your child that includes math and reading, as well as choice activities, such as drawing, building, or dancing. It doesn't have to be perfect, so don't stress. Having a clear vision of what is expected of your child will help them to see that just because they are home does not mean that they don't have work to do. Experts recommend helping them prioritize and learn to create goals, tasks, and deadlines, just like adults do when they go to work. Routines and schedules are extremely important for children at school 
and this is no different in their at-home school. Children will function best if they maintain their routines as close as normal as possible. Around lunchtime, encourage them to get up, get some fresh air, go for a walk, or take a ride on a bike, or have a snack so that they are not sedentary the entire day. Number four, make space for learning. Identify a learning space where your child can work free of distractions. Many adults have a specific area in the home in which they do work, and it's important that you create a similar space for your child. Your children will achieve their best work in a quiet, comfortable, and dedicated space that is strictly devoted to learning. This space should be a different setup than where they normally play games or watch television. Have times for quiet and reflection. For families with children of different ages and parents who may also be unexpectedly working from home, it's good to build in some time for peace and quiet. Siblings may need to work in different rooms to avoid distraction. Many families will need to negotiate access to devices, priorities for Wi-Fi bandwidth, and schedules within the day. Noise counseling headphones are a great idea. Number five, set goals and make plans. Support your child as they build in self-regulation skills. Have daily check-ins and help them learn how to make a daily learning plan. Also monitor their progress towards their goals. Begin and end the day by checking in. In the morning, you might ask, what classes or subjects do you have today? Do you have any assessments? How will you spend your time? What resources do you need? What can I do to help? Then, at the end of the day, you might ask, how far did you get in your learning task today? What did you discover? Was it hard? What do we need to do for tomorrow? These brief grounding conversations matter. Check in with your child to help process instructions they receive from their teachers. This helps your child organize themselves and set priorities for the day. Not all students thrive in distance learning. Some kids struggle with too much independence or lack of structure. These check-ins can help avoid later challenges and disappointments. They help students develop self-management and essential skills for life. Parents are good life coaches. Limit distractions. A digital quarantine might be necessary to keep your child's attention focused on their schoolwork. You should limit their use of their devices other than what is needed to complete their work until their schoolwork is done. If you choose, you can allow your child to play on a device during a designated break, but make them aware that they only have a limited amount of time until they need to get back to work. Number six, maintain communication. Check your email for updates from your child's school. As schools shut down and turn to distance learning, don't forget to check for updates from your local school district. Remember to share any updates from the teacher directly with your kids, as they would be happy to hear from them. Keep in touch with other parents. Social distancing is important during this time, but staying in touch with others via virtual communication is very important. Each parent has a child at home is going through a new experience. Check in with other parents to see what they have found effective and ask if they need help. If you're stumped, turn it over to the teachers. Making sense of and explaining concept that parents might have learned years ago could be impossible. You should feel free to contact your child's teacher. Many teachers have office hours built into their daily schedule. Also, encourage your child to reach out to their teacher via email or phone as needed. Number seven, keep calm and manage stress. Limit the news, which can be scary, especially for young children. Remind your child they are safe and that life will get back to normal. Ask them how they are feeling. 
Silence and secrets do not protect our children. Honesty and openness do. Think about how much they will understand. You know best. Manage stress and make the most of this unusual situation. We're going through a time of major upheaval to our normal routines and ways of life. And there's a great deal of anxiety in the world right now. Emotions may be running high and children may be worried or fearful. Parents may be stressed as well, and children often keenly are aware of these troubles. Children benefit when they get age-appropriate factual information and ongoing reassurance from trusted adults. In these circumstances, it's often possible to reframe challenges as opportunities for spending time together, discovering new ideas and interests, investing energy and attention, into activities that often get pushed aside by everyday tasks and responsibilities. Children rely on their parents for safety, both physically and emotionally. Reassure your child that you are there for them and that your family will get through this together. Older children and teens may be extra irritable as they miss out on time with friends and special events being canceled. Offer extra hugs and say I love you more often. Number eight, establish expectations. Don't let your children treat this as a vacation. This time at home might feel like a vacation for your child, but it's important to remind them that their education still comes first. Obligations like class assignments, grades, tests, state exams, SATs, and ACTs aren't going away just because classes have moved online. Plan your work and work your plan. Good planning can relieve stress for both children and parents. Check in with your child about their plans and help them develop a written schedule. Help them prioritize and learn to create goals and tasks and deadlines, just like their parents do at work. Tasks that may not have been difficult for them while attending school in person can become more challenging when learning from home. So it's important to reinforce boundaries and offer incentives for healthy behaviors. Help your child manage their emotions and behavior. And know when not to respond. As long as your child isn't doing something dangerous, ignoring bad behavior can be an effective way to stopping it. Like any good parent, pick your battle. Number nine, balance online with offline. Encourage off-screen activities such as reading together, physical activity, and creative projects. As much as possible, parents should encourage print and book reading. Mix screen time with old school learning mediums. Overuse of screen time can have adverse impacts on young brains. So it's important to mix it up during a time like this. It's likely that your children will want to continue to use their screens of some sort during their breaks from the work. So it's important to limit screen time by mixing in old school mediums as well. Pull out some paper and pencils and go old school, journaling or crafting a story. Add some art with crowns or Sharpies. Cutting and pasting offline can be fun too. Remember to schedule time for fun. While this is most certainly not a vacation, it's important to have some fun with your children while they're at home. It's rare that you have this much time with your children, so use it as an opportunity to bond. Number 10, manage mental health and well-being. Answer your child's questions about the pandemic simply and honestly. Recognize your child's feelings. Also, take care of yourself. Eat healthy, exercise, and get enough sleep. Find ways to decompress and take breaks. Remember to breathe. Reach out for others for help as needed. We all need a break sometimes. When your child is asleep, do something fun or relaxing for yourself. Allow your child to interact with friends via video chat. Your children are used to lots of social contract at school, so they will definitely feel the effects of being distanced from their classmates. 
While it might not be safe for your kids to see their friends in person, you should allow them to interact with them online beyond social media and text messaging. Video chats are often the closest things to seeing someone in person and are a great way to get in social time without endangering yourself and others. If your child does not regularly video chat with their friends, you can speak with other parents to set up a video chat play date. While it's certainly a stressful time, it's also an opportunity. With extra time at home, talk to your child about their strengths, interests, and where they might need more support. One positive thing that might come out of this situation is that parents will get a closer look at how our children are progressing and what they need. With this information, we can best partner with teachers to support learning more holistically. Keep an eye on your family's stress levels. We have to accept the new norms, at least for the time being. This sudden shift to online education will undoubtedly pose a challenge. But remember, we're all in this together. You're not alone in this journey. Check in with other parents to see what they found effective. Share your concerns and useful hints. If you need contact information for other parents or resources, reach out to the PTA at your child's school. It's important that we all work together as a community for the good of our children and families. As we transition to remote learning, we must remember that all stakeholders, teachers, administrators, students, and parents are learning new skills and pedagogy. So please be patient with yourself and those around you. Also, it's important that we remember to focus in on the core business of schools, relationships and learning. Even with the addition of technology as a tool for learning, we should never take the heart of the classroom teacher out of the learning process. COVID-19 has taken away our daily work, home and school routines. This is hard for children and parents alike. When we model peaceful and loving relationships, our children feel more secure and loved. Positive language, active listening, and empathy help maintain a peaceful and happy family environment during these stressful times. Well, I hope you've enjoyed these 10 tips and we wanna thank you for your time today. You and your children are important to us. Today's presentation will be available shortly on the Nevada Department of Education's YouTube channel. Come back to it anytime, and please feel free to share the recording with your friends and family. Again, thank you for joining us. It has been a pleasure serving you.